Hello stained glasses, Sophie D'Souza here, Sophie Stained Glass. Thank you for joining me. Now, today it's going to look very much like I had a cunning plan. Um, actually, let's just say serendipity had more of a hand in it than my planning. Um, so last week I put up a video of me, just for fun, cutting uh, internal angles, seeing how far I could push it. So I then got a call for someone who wants me to cut some glass into a keyhole shape. Um, and he has explained that this glass has huge sentimental value. So I'm gonna try not to break it. So why don't you come and have a look at what I'm gonna do. So th this is the glass I've got to cut down um, because it's come from, I think his wife's parents' house and he wants to put it in his own front door. Um, and I've got to cut it down with this kind of shape. So when I went to collect the glass, it transpired that this isn't really stained glass. I don't know if you can see. This is just one piece of glass with stuck on lead and film. But he still wants to try and use it. Um, if it was all separate pieces, uh, there's much less jeopardy involved because you break one piece, it's just one piece, you replace that one piece. But if I if I break anything, and this glass might be brittle as I try and cut it, it's a goner, isn't it? And actually, in that event, I'm not quite sure what plan B is. I'll talk it over with the customer. So, um, yes, this will be an interesting, possibly not fun job, but I'll give it my best. So I'm just going to mark up the centre line. Now I'm taking I'm taking this in a bit from the edge because I need to have a bit of room for when I fit. So I'm losing a couple of mil off either side. And that's what my measurements told me. I took the measurements of what was going to be the fitting size. Or the glazing size it's sometimes called. Now I measured the, sh the, the shoulders of 655 to fit in there, 655, and that is quite tight so I need to come in. So what I think I'll do is I've got the shape here that I need to follow. And I'll just move that down a bit. So I will six nine four. So I will take more off the bottom than the top. I'm just going to do a centre line as well, actually. That's what I meant to draw. Okay. There we go. Now, we want 
to take this off to here, I reckon. Let's see if we can do this. Oh yeah. That's really no problem at all, is it? Look at that. Away it comes. Lovely. So the first cut I'm going to do is the most difficult one because, you know, that's the place it's most likely to break so I may as well start with that. And um, I need to make sure there's none of this gubbins here on the outside edge. And the best way to get this stuff on is put your blade underneath and actually sometimes a razor blade is easier and flick it from underneath rather than scrape. It's a subtle distinction, but it makes all the difference, actually. Don't know if you can see. Um. Right, I think we are good to go. I have it on a piece of cardboard because of all this gunk I can't put it flat down on the surface um, right I will get my implements wish me luck because there really isn't any coming back from this and I've not cut this kind of glass before I think it's called minster if there's anything like cathedral it ain't gonna be my friend can see what I'm doing so let me me. Right. So here goes. Okay, very good, first cut done. Okay, so I'm gonna take the, 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 the bottom off now because then these lengths will just be slightly shorter and I've got just a little bit more hope. We need hope, don't we need hope? We always need hope. So. my running pliers right 
at that tip. That started at one end. Started at the other. This is not nice glass to, to cut. Um, should just be coming. Now that I've opened up either end, I can see the light coming through it. Let's see if you can still see what I'm doing. Okay. I'm going to just hopefully run the cut along. Yes. Okay, so this is this is quite thick, this glass. I think that is one of my problems. Yeah. So hopefully you can see that's one of the reasons it's a bit tougher to cut. Okay. Just going to take a tiny bit more off here. Just to make sure my glass cutter is going to clear the lead. gonna let's just see if you can see what I'm doing yeah I'm gonna try and open the cut ah I didn't take off this silly me silly silly me look well, that was a bit of a rookie mistake, wasn't it? See if we can't get this one to be a good one too. Okay. And the other end. Okay, so that starts the tapping. I can see it's run quite a long way along. Not on this side though. Yes. I spin a bolt a piece of glass from my local glazers. It's called Minster. It is directional, so you've got to watch that. And I'm just going to double check my measurements. I'm going to follow this line. So I'm going to make all the clearance at the bottom.
okay I'm not just following this line because I'm going to flip it over to cut it um, and this shape here this is kind of what I was experimenting cutting last week that internal angle so it's nice, it's nice to know what is doable so I don't confuse my eyes. Somebody said to me, when you're tapping, to start at this internal corner rather than, because I tend to sort of follow follow the, the the open opening of the of the line along so try their method not such high stakes with this piece because if I do it wrong I'll just go get another piece of glass Present and correct, nothing broken, no skating off the wrong direction cuts like we all know sometimes happens. I'm really relieved because, you know, I probably, I don't know what I would have actually said to the customers <laughs> other than, sorry, I ruined your glass. Um, no need for that now. Um, so I look like a proper expert, <laughs> which always helps. And um, I should go and fit the job and get me money. <laughs> Thanks for watching and please like, comment and subscribe.